Hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover a topic of index drawing. I know that I promise that we're going to actually uh, work on uh, these binary groups. But as I was making a video, I, I realized that we might do some stuff first that's going to make our life a bit easier in the future. So that's why I'm going to cover index buffers and the next video interleaved buffers. But they are going to be fairly quick. I should release one after the other. Uh, so what is drawing? Uh, what, what does it mean to draw with index buffers? Well, if you look at our geometry here, uh, we had some data that was duplicated here and then I believe here and here. And the idea is this, right? If you remember, we drew like this. We had this V0, then we had V1, for example, and then we had, for example, here V3 for one triangle. And then we also had for the other, we had to duplicate V1 again. Then we had maybe V2 here, and then we connected back to V3. And therefore, uh, this is what we had to do to draw true triangles. But now we might do it a bit differently. And how does it work with index buffers? Well, basically we still have V1, V, V0, V1, V2, and V3, but we also have a new array which is called our index array, and then we just uh, use indexes uh, to refer to our vertices. So we might say here, okay, here is zero, let's use index zero, here is one, let's use index one, and here is three, let's use index three. So that's our first triangle. And then uh, we might say for second one, we can just say one, two, three, right? One, two, three, for the second one. And that's how we draw with it. Uh, what does this allow us to do? Well, for example, look at here. We had to duplicate uh, here, for example, then here and here, and that's seven. Uh, well, basically, so that's seven times four. Uh, so basically, maybe maybe I should draw it as well. So to represent this which was du dupe, let's say that this this uh, edge was dupe. We had to do x, y, which is fine, then u, v, which is fine, then r, g, and b for colors, which is fine as well. But then we had to duplicate this as well, right, for the second one. Everything we had to do it twice. At the indexes, we can just say, okay, use this one, right, twice maybe. Maybe we had one, zero, two, this was one. Uh, let's say, and then we had one, two, three, and this was one. So instead of referring and filling out seven uh, basically floats, we could just use one integer or unsigned uh, integer beta yet, or even short. So I'm going to explain it in a bit, but let's actually create our indices array. So it kind of allows us to really save on data, but that's not even the most important part. The most important part is just, it's a bit easier to think about uh, once you get used to it. And also it's, it's uh, it, you might have, uh, if you ever write an importer or something like this, model importer, you might get data like that. So it's just reality. You're probably going to have to deal with both cases at, uh, at certain times, but then we can lower the amount of data here. And uh, this one was dupe. And I believe last one was due. So we're just going to have in this is array now. Maybe I should just remove this and we can say this in this is. And maybe something like this. I, I believe this should work. So if we save it, nothing happens because we obviously need to create our index buffer. And here uh, we had this method create buffer. And we're going to create similar method called uh, create index buffer, but for now let's just copy it or better yet cut it. And then I'm going to create a class called buffer util. We're going to export it. So I'm, I'm just cleaning up some stuff uh, because uh, it will be easier in the future to work with it. So we're going to have public st static create and let's just call it vertex buffer. Our device, uh, we now paste it as parameter. So it's going to be device, GPU device. 
and everything else remains the same. So just make sure to make it public static. And now we're going to have similar method for index buffer. So we're just going to say public static create index buffer. It's kind of the same, uh, but notice here we will use uh, uint 16. Uh, we could also use uint 32, but uint 16 is going to suffice. And then we can just say create buffer. And it's almost the same. Just notice this parameter here. We're using index buffer now. And here as well, we're using uh, unsigned integer uh, 16 array. So that's the only difference. And uh, basically, our indices, right, uh, usually we worked with float. So uh, that means, uh, let's remove this. We had to work with some decimal notation, maybe seven. 7.23, whatever, la la la. Uh, but within this, is you actually want the whole numbers. So you can use uh, uint 16 or uint 32. Uh, only difference is how many uh, numbers can you represent and the max of the numbers. So basically, uint 16 is going to use two bytes, u 16 is two bytes, and u 32 is four bytes. Uh, in WebGL, you can also do U8, which is one byte, but not in WebGPU. Uh, okay, uh, that's not even that important. What is important is, uh, let's refactor uh, this stuff, this create buffer. Uh, so we're going to say, we need to import this, what we created. Uh, the, sorry, what was it called? Util buffer, util. We're going to use buffer util here, make sure to import it, and then we can just say buffer util, create vertex buffer, and here we need to paste actually device now. So just make sure to do this. All right, we covered that. But we also now have to create uh, index buffer. And it's also type GPU buffer. Like I mentioned, everything is almost the same. So we're just going to say this index buffer. And then we say create index buffer and we prepare our indices. To index buffer, it still doesn't work. Uh, it's actually really simple. Why? Because we still have to do some stuff, which is simple enough. So first one, uh, we have to use actual index buffer. Uh, set. It's called set index buffer, and then we have to pass type. And here uh, we're not drawing uh, with, uh, well, basically vertex array anymore. We're drawing with indexed buffer, and now it works. So, see, uh, it's kind of easy. And uh, the important parts, uh, the important part is uh, that with this, you can really save on data, especially as models get bigger and bigger, and then when you have to reference a, a lot of points which are the same. Let's say that your geometry, uh, here we're always working with simple rectangle because we're working on 2D game, game, but let's say that you have maybe something like this. This is one triangle, this is second, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth, this is sixth. You get the idea, and then it continues. Let's say you're trying to make something circular, and then you have to reference this triangle, I don't know how many, maybe 10 times, maybe 20, uh, could be even 1,000, right? It, it, it all depends. Uh, with that said, I also wanted to cover something really quick, and that is something that we haven't used so far, but I actually wanted to use it, and that's called, uh, we're going to, not going to need this anymore. And that's called, if I look at extensions here, I have this extension called WebGPU. So basically, this is a WebGPU debugger. And uh, if I refresh it, rest it maybe, usually should catch a frame. And as you can see, it caught some data here. And then here, uh, it basically holds all of your uh, WebGPU objects that you have created, and then you can take a look into them. For example, we had a buffer which was for our positions. And you can see the values here. You can also see the values for the color buffer, then for the texture buffer, and finally for the index buffer. But you can also see some other data as well. For example, textures that we're using. You can see it here. 
And then you can also go into shader modules, look at the shader code uh, that you're using. Anyway, uh, there is a bunch of stuff here. I haven't used it that much because it's relatively new and I'm still trying to figure it out, but I did use it occasionally. So uh, if, if you want to know, uh, you can find it on uh, Chrome extensions store, store under WebGP dev tools. Uh, sorry, for me, it's in Croatian because it's my native language. But anyway, you can find it here and then just install it. And it's available uh, when you install it from basically uh, developer tools. Uh, inspect and then just find it here. And yeah, that's, mm, that's it. Also, you can see your devices. You can see all the features of your device. If you remember the first video, uh, I, I was describing how to uh, fetch device, but you can also then query for all of this, or you can just use this and then get data immediately, which is super handy. Uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to cover interleaf buffer. Uh, that's that's going to uh, be all about uh, merging uh, these arrays into single one. All right. Uh, until next time, then.